Hello, welcome to Premium Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 120 of ASP.NET video tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss about caching multiple responses for a single web form. Please watch part 119 from ASP.NET video tutorial before proceeding with this video as this is a continuation to part 119. Let's understand caching multiple responses with an example. Let's flip to SQL Server Management Studio and if you remember in the previous session we discussed about creating the stable TBL products and populating it with some sample data. If you need the SQL script to do that, I have that on my blog which can be found at this URL that you can see on the slide. So on this blog, on the right hand side you can find a link for pre free ASP.NET video tutorial. When you click on this link, you should land on this page, free ASP.NET video tutorial. And on this page, you have caching in ASP.NET uh, part 119. On this page, we can find the SQL script to create and populate TBL products table. Okay, so we have some sample data within that table. Now let's write a simple stored procedure which retrieves the products by their name. So I have the stored procedure here, SP get products by name. And then this stored procedure has this parameter at product name. If the name of the product, I mean, if we supply a value of all for this product name parameter, then what we are doing here, simply retrieving ID name and description from TBL products table, all the products. Okay. On the other hand, if I supply any other name and, you know, apart from all, then we are retrieving ID name and description from TBL products where name is equal to whatever we supply. So the only difference is if the product name is all, we retrieve all the products. Otherwise, we filter the product by name using the where clause here. Simple stored procedure. So let's go ahead and create that now. Execute. Uh, command completed successfully. Let's test the stored procedure. So obviously, if I supply a value of all, we should be able to retrieve all the products from TBL products table. So that's what we get. On the other hand, if I supply a value of laptops for the product name parameter, then I should only be able to retrieve the products which match that ma name laptops. In this case, we have only one row and that's what we get here. All right. Now let's see how to invoke the stored procedure from an ASP.NET web application and display the data that's retrieved by this stored procedure. So let's flip to Visual Studio. And I'm going to have a simple text here, select a product, and then let's drag and drop a drop down list onto this web form. And in this drop down list, we want to list all the products that are available for selection. So we have around four products here. So I want to display all these four products so the user can select them from the drop down list. And just to speed things up, I have, you know, basically the products that we, that the user can select already typed. So let's go to Visual Studio and then let's specify the list items. Okay. And if you look at the list items here, you know, laptops, iPhone, LCD, TV, desktop, you know, the text and value are the same things here. And look at that. Along with all the products that we have, I'm also using another list item all just in case if the user want to see all the products, then he uses that text all. Okay. So we have that um, drop down list there. And then we want a grid view control where the user can actually see the data. So let's drag and drop the grid view control onto the web form. And then let's quickly auto format this. Okay. All right. So we have the grid view control. And then finally, I also want to display the server side time and the client time. So server time. And to display the server side time, let's drag and drop a label control onto the web form. And also I want to display the client time. So client time. And let's remove the default text label from the label one control. All right. So we have all the HTML that's required now. Now let's flip to the code behind file of this web form. So obviously now we need to invoke the stored procedure SP get products uh, by name from our uh, ASP.NET web application. And to do that, I already have written a method, a simple private method here. Okay, so this is simple ADO.NET code. Okay, so what we are doing here, uh, we are using the configuration manager class to read the connection string from web.config file. So in web.config file, we have db connection string. We are reading the connection string value 
into this variable CS. And we are using that variable to actually create a SQL connection object. And then we have SQL data adapter, which is invoking this stored procedure SP get product by name. Okay, and look at this. This stored procedure expects a parameter to be passed in. So obviously we have to prepare a SQL parameter object as well. So SQL parameter, and then the parameter name is set product name, and the value for that is coming. Look at this. This method has a parameter, product name parameter. So that's what we are using. Uh, actually, when we call this method, that's when we we will supply the actual value. Okay, and finally we are adding that parameter to the parameters collection of the select command of data adapter object. And we are creating a new data set, filling that with the data uh, that we get after we execute the stored procedure, SP get product by name. Finally, we are setting the data set as the data source for the grid view control and invoking data bind. Simple private method. Now let us see how to actually use this method. Now look at this. In the page load, if it is not a postback, meaning if it is the initial get request of the web form, then what do I want to do? I want to basically show all the products to the end user. Okay, so in that case, I'm going to call this method get product by name, and then look at this. I'm going to pass a value of all to that parameter. So obviously, when we p pass all, what is going to happen? The stored procedure is going to return all the products. So I want to basically retrieve all the products and display them in the grid view control. So that's what is going to happen now. Okay, and what else I want to do? I also want to set the server side time. If you remember, on this web form, we have this label one control, which displays the server side time. And to retrieve the server time, I'm going to set the text property of this label control to date time dot now dot to string. So date time dot now should give us the current date and time on the web server where this code gets executed. Okay. And another thing is we have displayed the server side time using date time dot now but to display the client time we can make use of the javascript so let's flip to the source so this is where i want to display the client time so let's use the script tag and specify the type as text slash javascript and to print the client time we can use the document objects write method and to retrieve the client time we can use the date function the javascript date function that's it so this piece of code should retrieve the time on the client machine, whereas this piece of code should retrieve the date and time on the web server. All right. Now, another thing that we have to do, obviously, when the selection in the dropdown list changes, we want to display only the product that the user has selected. So the first thing is I want to set the auto post back property to true. So whenever the selection changes, we want to immediately post back to the web server. So I've set the auto post back property to true. Double click the drop down list control. So whenever the selection changes, what should happen? We want to invoke this method and then pass in the name of the product that we want to display to the user. So obviously within the drop down list, the user will select a product and that selected value we want to pass to this method which in turn is going to call the stored procedure and pass that product name as a parameter value for that product name attribute so let's go ahead and invoke that method now within the drop down list one underscore selected index changed event so get product by name and look at this it expects a product name and where do we get the product name from from the drop down list and from drop down list, which property do we use? Selected value. Because if you remember on the web form, we have set the value also as the name of the product. Okay. All right, so that's all. Okay, let's save everything. Let's go ahead and run this as it stands right now. Now we don't have caching enabled at all. So now the web form, you know, the application is going to work uh, normally without caching. So let's run this by pressing Control F5. When the web form loads, as you might expect, you know, uh, it should first display all the products here. Okay, look at the server time, 1645.16, 1645.16. Both the server side and client time are the same. Now I select laptops. Look at that, 1645.27, 1645.27. Both the server and client time are the same, and I see laptops. And if I select desktops, I get desktops and notice the server side time 
and the client side time they are the same things okay now let's go ahead and enable caching in the previous session to you know we discussed about enabling caching to enable caching all we do is set the output cache attribute okay so let's go to the web form so let's go ahead and set at output cache attribute so output cache and there are two mandatory attributes the first one is the duration which controls how long the web form should be cached uh, in this case, I'm going to set that to 60, meaning this web form is going to be cached for the next 60 seconds. And then we have vary by param attribute as well. In the previous session, we discussed that this parameter can be used to cache multiple responses for a single web form. In the previous session, we have set that to none, meaning cache only one response for the web form. Let's go ahead and set that to none for now and let's see what's going to happen. So we have enabled caching, set, set the duration to 60 seconds and vary by param to none. So now only one response of this web form will be cached. So as a result of this, let's see how the behavior of this web form is going to be. Let's run this project by pressing Control F5. Now look at this, when the web form loads, I get all the products, which is good. Now let me select, for example, here iPhone. Look at that, I get iPhones. So look at the server side time, 164657. That's when this web form is you know, uh, sent back to the user. And that's the client time. Server side time and client side time are the same. Now look at this, I'm selecting all here. Look at that, I only get iPhone. And I'm trying to select LCD TV. Okay, notice that since this web form is cached and since only one response for this web form is cached, no matter what you select here, you know, you only get that cached response for the web form. And this doesn't make any sense to the end user, right? Because, you know, I'm making a different selection, but ultimately it turns out that I, I get that single response that is cached for the single selection of drop-down list iPhone. Okay, no matter what your selection is within the drop-down list, you get whatever is cached on the web server. So how do we correct this problem? To correct this problem, all you need to do is set this vary by param, you know, to drop down list one. So obviously, if you set vary by param to none, only one response of webform one is cached, and that's what the, you know, every user will get when they try to access that web form before that duration has expired. Okay, but on the, on the other hand, to solve that problem, all we have to do is set that vary by param to drop down list one. So in this case, what's gonna happen? It's gonna cache up to five different responses you know, for that web form. And obviously one for each possible selection from the drop-down list control. Now look at this, in this drop-down list control, I have five different values. So five responses for this web form will be cached. One for each possible selection from this drop-down list one. So let's see how to solve that problem. So I'm gonna set vary by param to drop-down list one. Okay, let's save that. Let's go ahead and run that now. So let's close that initial. So now all is retrieved at 1648.56. Now look at this. I get laptop 1649.02. That's when it is cached, 1649.02. I select iPhone. Look at that, 1649.09. That's when it is cached. Look at that, when I go back to laptops, I get that same cached version. But look at the client side time, it keeps changing because on the client side, the JavaScript code keeps running. On the other hand, if I go to desktops, now this web form will be reprocessed and look at this, at this time, this web form is reprocessed and a response for this desktop is cached. So if I go back to laptops, look at that, I still get that version which, which was cached at 1649.02. Okay, so now for each possible selection, you know, a response will be cached. Okay, so if I select all, look at that 1649, maybe that 60 minute, uh, 60 seconds duration has expired. So this web form is reprocessed. So let's go for laptop. So this is not reprocessed yet. This, uh, this web form was cached at 1649.02. Now it is 1649.58. Okay, so in, in the next three or uh, four seconds, it's gonna be reprocessed. Now, if I select, if I go back to iPhone and come back to laptops, look at that, it will be reprocessed and recached. Okay, so now since we have set vary by param to uh, drop down list one, for each possible selection from the drop down list, we will have a response of the web form cached. 
On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.